It's no secret that Tony Stark as Iron Man has gone through many iterations of his famous suit, with each version being an upgraded version of the last. Take his appearance in the MCU, for example. Across all these movies, we've seen him in a number of Iron Man suits, the most memorable for me at least being the scene from Iron Man 3 where all the suits are remotely summoned for one final big fight scene. So, just imagine how many iterations there are across the thousands of comic book issues. What is going on, all you nerdy folk out there? My name is Jack, and today we are going to be taking a look at some of the strongest suits that Tony Stark has ever created. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Number 10, Model 13, the Hulkbuster Armor. Starting with an absolute classic, the Hulkbuster armor has been reworked throughout the years many times, those models being Model 36 and 52, however, let's focus on the first iteration for today. Rather than a full suit of armor like most other suits Tony has created, the Hulkbuster armor is actually an add-on to the modular armor that was introduced in 1994's Iron Man number 300. Basically this armor had different add-ons used for a variety of situations, ranging from microsurgery equipment to the massive Hulkbuster. So I guess kind of think of it as the Mr. Potato Head of Iron Man armor. This particular add-on was used when Hulk confronted Iron Man over the production of Gamma Bombs while partnered with Stain International. And you probably guessed it, but they did have a pretty big fight over it. Possessing these standard repulsors and unibeam that are incorporated in all base Iron Man suits, the Hulkbuster armor integrated a magnohydraulic pseudo-musculature structure, which provided enhanced strength of what is assumed to be able to lift at least 175 tons. Sensors were also adapted to focus on detecting gamma radiation, and it had impact-resistant carbon composite plating and an anchoring system so he could withstand any hit that came his way. Although the modular armor appeared in Iron Man number 300, the Hulkbuster armor didn't appear until a few issues later in Iron Man number 304. But, I mean, we're all pretty familiar with this one, I assume, since it has already appeared on the big screen in Avengers Age of Ultron. So, let's move on to some stronger and maybe lesser known armors. Number 9, Model 57 3FB. Known officially as the Fin Fang Foom Buster, this suit was designed by Tony alongside Stark Unlimited as a countermeasure of, against his longtime enemy, Fin Fang Foom. Before we dive more into this design, I do just want to say this one is probably my favorite suit design because, but I probably am a little bit biased considering I grew up on Gundam and Power Rangers, so anytime I see a blocky looking behemoth of a robot, I am instantly in love. But anyways, let's not dive too far into this tangent. Let's get back to the 3FB. Deployed by Stark to intercept Triple F, that is what I'm calling Fin Fang Foom because my god that is a real mouthful when he attacked Manhattan. This suit was deployed as a set of autopiloted air repulsor cannons and in true Megazord fashion they combined together to create the 20 story tall suit powerful enough to, to keep Triple F at bay. Alongside the standard Iron Man suit capabilities, this suit can emit electrical discharges from the palms of its gauntlets. Now, unfortunately, Triple F was able to land a critical hit on this armor, forcing Tony to eject from it and continue the fight in the Model 56 armor. And since then, we haven't seen much of it. If you want to see this suit in action for yourself, check it out in 2018's Tony Stark Iron Man number 1. Number 8, Model 22, Thor Buster. Similar to Batman and his contingency plan for the Justice League, it appears that Tony is ready to fight the other members of the Avengers if he has to, although I really doubt he wants to because some of them are literal gods. In this case, Thor gave Tony an Asgardian crystal with the hopes of creating a safer and cleaner power source for Earth. But after an Odin force powered and angry Thor begins to rampage because an Asgardian worshippers, because some Asgardian worshippers were killed, Tony is kind of forced to design a suit of armor powered by the crystal that is powerful enough to stop the almighty god of thunder. With a similar design to the destroyer armor, this suit utilizes the mystical Asgardian energy for everything from flight to life support and it's basically invulnerable with Thor being the only thing able to damage it. Unfortunately, it did not stick around for too long though because once Thor got tired of fighting with Tony, he just straight up ripped the suit in half and thankfully Tony wasn't in it anymore as he had already ejected himself knowing this was a fight he could probably not win. Now I highly recommend you check this fight out for yourself because it is really well done, so head on over to 2003's Iron Man Volume 3 number 64 and let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Coming in at number 7, we have Iron Lad's armor. Stepping away from Tony Stark for a hot second, let us take a look at, at the armor Nathaniel Richards wears as Iron Lad. This neurokinetic suit was actually given to him by Kang the Conqueror, his future self, and Nate decided that instead of following in his own footsteps, he would travel to the past and enlist the help of the Avengers. However, they had already been disbanded. After downloading Vision's operating system and the Avengers' failsafe program into his suit, he took up the guise of Iron Lad with plans to assemble the young Avengers. While wearing this armor, Nate is able to lift 10 tons, create temporal divergences allowing him to travel through time, fire a concussive blast from his fingertips, and fly. This suit is also connected directly to his thoughts and emotions, so it's able to manifest and transform it into whatever he's thinking. For example, say if someone grabbed him and he felt scared, the suit might create some spice to get the attacker away. 
During this fight with Kang the Conqueror, Nate actually removes the armor to prevent himself from being tracked, and thanks to the Vision operating system, it becomes fully sentient, allowing Nate to return to his own timeline knowing that there will be someone or something around to protect the people as part of the Young Avengers. First appearing in 2005's Young Avengers number 1, why not give this whole storyline a read for yourself? Number 6, Model Number 9. Now this one doesn't really get a fancy title like the other ones for some reason, but it, that doesn't make it any less powerful. After just one look at it, you're probably really confused why I put it on this list today, and rightly so, because it is one of Tony's earliest models. Tony finished this model just before the first Armor Wars, and was very, very reluctant to use it due to his high power cap capabilities. However, he was later forced to use it to stop firepower after he was previously defeated in his other suits, and needless to say, he kind of got a taste for it because he continued to work as Iron Man in this suit for quite some time. Equipped with a battle computer that can track up to 60 enemies at once, a universal translator, an energy shield, and so much more, this suit is really not one you want to mess with. However, that's not why I thought it should be mentioned today. This suit is unique because at one point it actually fused with the Sword of Legend Excalibur, bestowing Tony with magical powers along with his already incredibly advanced technology. And now with a badass new look, this suit also made him invulnerable, and this suit allowed Tony to defeat an extra dimensional eye monster before reverting back to its original form. It sucks that this form didn't last longer, but hey, I guess if you make Iron Man invincible for too long, his ego might get bigger, and I don't think anyone would be able to handle that. The model number 9 suit first appears in 1988's Iron Man number 231, but if you're only interested in seeing it fused with Excalibur, don't worry, I got you. Check out Iron Man number 249 and 250. Number 5, we have Model 50, Endosyme Armor. Following the inversion spell that flipped his moral axis, Tony designed the Endosyme Suit, a symbiotic suit made completely of a liquid smart metal that hardens when in contact with his body. Based off the symbiote's biology, this suit is basically meant to be on his person at all times, and it can even be controlled remotely, going as far as to take a humanoid form that is able to take commands through a psionic link. The abilities of the suit are absolutely insane. It's capable of absorbing energy, sustaining electrical currents like a never-ending taser, and even has the ability to increase its size into a makeshift Hulkbuster-style suit. Fans have seen this armor go up against the likes of Storm and Spectre and come out on top with little to no damage taken. Or unfortunately, or thankfully, I guess I'm not really sure at this point, it was destroyed during the Secret War and nobody has seen anything close to it ever since. Making a small cameo in 2014's Avengers Volume 5, number 32, we are fully introduced to this beast of a suit in 2015's Superior Iron Man number 1, so go take a look at it for yourself. Coming in at number 4, we have Model 51, Model Prime Armor. With the prototype first appearing in 2015's Contest of Champions number 1, this suit's full version came to life in the Invincible Iron Man Volume 3 number 1, and man, it is a pretty dang good suit. It basically combines all the aspects of Tony's other suits, making it adaptable to any task at hand. Even though it was designed solely because Tony felt threatened by Riri Williams, the 15-year-old MIT student who was able to reverse engineer some of his tech, it's a good thing it came to be because it has been very useful. Comprised of small hexagonal scales, this suit features upgraded versions of the standard Iron, Iron Man armor weaponry such as repulsor blasters that can cut through enemies with phasing abilities, and three unibeams on his chest, effectively making it a tri-beam. This suit also has some new tricks up its sleeves, such as a new onboard cloaking system, it can work autonomously if the pilot is injured, and most impressively, this suit can change shape at a moment's notice into anything from a sword to a complete shift into a Hulkbuster-like suit. It's also immune to a number of attacks, namely sonic attacks and EMPs, and can take a serious beating from the likes of Captain Marvel and so many more. There has also been another character in the Marvel Universe who actually donned this specific suit for a bit, but you know what, I'll let you find out who it was for yourself. Number 3, Model 37, Bleeding Edge Armor. Dubbed the next step after Extremis by Tony himself, this suit was created while he was trying to reinvent himself and his armor. Stark worked with Reed Richards to create this after getting away from running S.H.I.E.L.D. and being the head of the world. This suit existed inside of Tony Stark's body, literally forming around him thanks to incredibly powerful nanotech, and I know as unrealistic as a set of armor made out of nanotech may seem, the Bleeding Edge armor is arguably one of the best suits that Tony Stark has ever worn. Not only does it bring the benefits of an improved extremist to the table, the nanotech that powers it basically ensures that Iron Man is ready to fight whenever and wherever. By creating a second layer of artificial muscle over to Stark's body, the armor is capable of healing itself and making it effectively invulnerable. And that coupled with all his normal weaponry alongside a new energy blade and deflector shields makes you wonder if it could get any better than this. It also happens to be one of Stark's most popular suits, become the hero's default look for several years, as well as the main inspiration for Tony's suit in Iron Man 3. Now, considering how quickly Iron Man can switch out of suits, three years with a single set of armor is pretty impressive, and that's why it's so high on this list today. Check it out in action for yourself in 2010's Invincible Iron Man Volume 2, number 25. 
Coming in at number two, we have Model 61 God Killer Armor Mark II. Based on the original God Killer armor created by the Aspirant many eons earlier, Tony created the celestial sized armor and kept it hitting, having it orbit Mars in case one day a threat was big enough to warrant using it. Powered by eight nuclear reactors, this suit is pretty basic when it comes to weaponry, only possessing repulsor blasters. However, its speed and strength make up for it, being able to travel between Earth and Mars in a matter of minutes, and able to lift celestial beings off the ground. When the Dark Celestials came to attack Earth in 2018's Avengers Volume 8 Number 5, Tony felt it was finally time and deployed this behemoth of a machine. Allowing him to hold his own against the Dark Celestials for a short period of time, it ended up being no match for the Almighty Beings after Callus the Void was able to rip off its left arm. Hoping that taking one out would cause others to retreat, Tony attempted to launch the suit into space to blow it up. However, he was stopped by an army of dead Celestials re reanimated by the Horde. With no other option, Tony ejected himself from the suit and caused it to self-destruct. Even though this armor only lasted two issues, its sheer power and overall manufacturing costs of over four billion dollars is what landed it so high on today's list. And finally, number one, we have Model 63 Godbuster. Originating from the Escape, a virtual reality world created by Tony that allowed his mind to become unfettered from the restraints of the human brain, giving him the inspiration and knowledge he needed to create the only thing capable of destroying Motherboard, the Godbuster armor. Though little is known about the suit's full capabilities, Tony's brother Arno deemed it to be his masterpiece, referring to it as the ultimate weapon. And even Ironheart couldn't get a full read on its power level, stating that the armor radiated more power than anything she had ever seen before. After successfully taking down the villain, Tony realized this suit was far too powerful to remain in the real world and made the decision to fly the suit back into the factory it was created in and caused it to self-destruct, making the resources needed to recreate it and the suit completely destroyed and useless. Arno does eventually recreate a version of the suit that he wears as his own, but you know, I think we can talk about that another time, maybe in part two, who knows. For now though, this is all we know about the best Iron Man suit ever made, so why not check it out for yourself in 2019's Tony Stark Iron Man number 10 and number 11. That'll be it for this video everyone, do you have any other stronger Iron Man suits in mind? Well, let us know in the comments below and maybe we'll continue this list in a part 2. Don't forget to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd to stay up to date on all things nerdy and why not ring that notification bell so you know whenever we upload a video. As always, my name is Jack, thank you so much for watching and stay nerdy my friends.